Hello folks, it's going to be one of those days and one of those unplanned videos because I have had a request from Dave Thomas who is a very kind Patreon supporter who has donated some money to the channel and has asked me to do another one of my What Your Warhammer 40k Army Says About You videos but this time he asked me to do it all in one video and unscripted. That is the challenge. So I have no idea what's going to come out of my brain here. I have no idea what's going to come flying out of my mouth. So if you like that kind of Northern Exile content, today's video is for you. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. The Patreon button is also down below if you want to request things like Dave did. And also, make your way over to Composite Games if you're getting any models over the next few months. And use the promo code Northern Exile down below to get yourself 5% off your order at checkout. Right, let's dive right in, shall we? Because we're going to be here for a while, I think. Um, I don't think I'll get through the... <laughs> I don't think I'll be getting through these um, as quickly as I thought because the amount of thoughts that I've had have been, you know, innumerable on different armies at different times. And I haven't written anything down, so please bear with me if I stammer, if I lose track of my words. Please bear with me. This is not scripted. I'm just going off the top of my head as a challenge to myself. And if you, if you don't like the video, then, you know, blame Dave, blame, blame the people over on Patreon, because that's where we are. Alright, cool. So, these are in alphabetical order. I will only be doing the major factions, or again, we would be here all day. I know some of you would like that, which is nice, thank you very much, but also, I have other things to do. So, I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm going to say, look, I will do all the major factions, all the major Space Marine factions, that Games Workshop D major... I don't deem them as major, right? So Iron Hands are lumped in with the normal Space Marines and all that kind of stuff, all right? Because Games Workshop don't see them as major factions. I do, all right? Don't have a go at me. Just I'm just telling you what the major factions are in Games Workshop's eyes, right? You can see by the way that things sell, and you can see by the way that they push certain chapters over others, all right? Cool. And yes, Salamanders will be getting their own thing, because I do remember that last time I basically sidestepped them all together. <laughs> Um, cool. Let's go in, shall we? Adeptus Custodes. First and foremost. So what does collecting Adeptus Custodes say about you? Well, for me, you're probably a Horus Heresy fan. Because whilst the Custodes are in books like, you know, uh, the Talons of the Emperor books, you know, you know, the, the Carrion Throne and all that sort of stuff, they are in those books. The main books they're in are the Horus Heresy series. They are, especially towards the end, they are there nearly constant. Most of the main characters in in the Siege of Terror, at least three or four of them, are Adeptus Custodes, right? I would say you are around... You're probably in your 30s or above. I'm just going to be completely honest, because a lot of the guys I know who are into Adeptus Custodes quite like the fact that they're playing a powerful army that makes sense in the law, if you know what I'm saying, in that they're, they're playing an army that makes complete sense in the law for them to be powerful on the tabletop. Also, guys in their 30s tend not to have too much time to paint models, so Adeptus Custodes are again an ideal choice for them. Spray them gold, you know, ink them down with some Seraphim Sepia mixed with Norn Oil, dry brush them in some sort of, um, shall we say, I don't know, Griffin gold or something, dry uh, dry brush them in that a little lightly, add the red, and you're done. Essentially, you're done, right? If you don't have a lot of time, and you don't have a lot of time to do a lot of models, but you want to get on the tabletop and be competitive, Adeptus Custodes are the way to go. And so their fan base tends to be men in their 30s who have jobs, who have commitments, right? There's a very good reason why Henry Cavill's army of choice is Adeptus Custodes. Yes, they're cool. Yes, they're golden. Yes, they are basically the supermen of this setting. But also, that's not a guy with a lot of time on his hands, right? He's busy. And he goes around and he, and he does models like this because he's busy, right? So I think you're in this similar vein there. You're, you're, you're an older professional who's getting into 40k. And quite, I wanted to do Space Marines, but you don't have, you know, 19 hours a day to devote to making your own Space Marine chapter or choosing one. So you went with Adeptus Custodes. That's essentially who you are. This is also one of the dad factions. If you collect Adeptus Custodes, you are quite likely a father of some description. Or other. Yeah, you, you, are, you are a father with kids who, again, 
doesn't have a lot of time to devote to his hobby. There are several dad factions in 40k. We'll get into those a little bit later on when we see them. But that is Adeptus Custodes, and that is what I think your army says about you if you collect Adeptus Custodes. There's one last thing. Let's do a negative here. If you collect Adeptus Custodes, generally, you like being the best, and you're a little bit arrogant about it as well. You don't. You really do love telling the Space Marines where they can go shove their glory and honor. You know, you're the guardians of the of the Emperor himself. Who the hell do they think they are? I've met quite a lot of Custodes fans who have this kind of attitude towards other Imperial armies. You are beneath them. If they grace you with their presence, you are very, very lucky. Anyway, moving on. Maybe this won't take as long as I thought. Black Templars are next on the old alphabetical order. Even though I will be doing Ad Adeptus Mechanicus, don't worry about it. But I've just I've just named them Mechanicus, so they're, they're later on in the video. So don't worry. And, and Sororitas as well. All the Adeptus stuff is later on, all right? Because they're on the Sisters of Battle and Mechanicus and all that sort of stuff. All right, moving on. Uh, Black Templars. Um, <laughs> probably the most polarizing of the Space Marine chapters that are major Space Marine chapters. Not just because of who they are, but for what their fans are, all right? Black Templar players are some of the most down-to-earth based individuals that I've ever come across in my entire life. They are completely uncompromising in their values. A lot of them are quite conservative, but innocently so. They're not the kind of people who are going to run at you and say and tell you that your life choices are wrong, or that you should be shot or whatever for having a different opinion or life to theirs. They're not going to do that, right? A lot of them are extremely based, extremely conservative, extremely, you know... Um, I, I, I want my wife, and I want my kids, and I want nothing else. I want a picket fence, and I want to protect them, and pay for them, and nothing else. The amount of guys who are like that, this is another dad faction, the amount of guys who are like that, who collect Black Templars, is innumerable. Okay? Nice, innocent Black Templar fans, they're out there. And, and they are the vast majority of them as well. Alright? So, do you ever, like, see those videos on YouTube where there's an older guy giving younger men advice. And when I mean that, I don't mean he's, he's not doing it for clout. He's sitting in a fucking chair, and he's got a pipe in his hand or something like that, and he's just talking to the camera. And he's and he's in his 60s or 70s, and he's saying, listen, you're a young man. You need to have these things about you, and you need to make sure that you're doing... That, that's a Black Templar fan, all right? That guy collects Black Templars. Um, on the other side, unfortunately, there is a vast minority... I might say vast, I mean, you know, it's really small. There's a really small minority of Black Templar players who take the Iron Cross thing, let's just say, a little bit too far. And they start preaching the Black Templar rhetoric of, you know, xenophobia and literally nobody but humans. You know, they, they tend to... I, I, I have unironically heard a Black Templar fan get angry because on the back of the Black Templar box, the Combat Patrol, there is a Black Black Templar. Yes. Yes. I mean, it, it is a very, very, very vast minority. That's really a misnomer. It's a very small minority, is what I'm supposed to be saying there. It's a very small minority. But they do exist. Unfortunately. But when you have the regalia of the Black Templars, and the way that they think, and the way that they go about their business, they're extremely xenophobic, I think it's a real testament, and a pat on the back, to 40k as a hobby, that we have so few Black Templar fans who are like that. Do you know what I mean? They are so few and far between. I have many dozens more interactions with Black Templar fans who are just based as fuck and really nice. Jolly men who are, who just get on with their lives and don't, and don't and wish the best for everybody. But they have their own values and they stick to them. And most of them are centered around respect for other people and respect for himself. Do you know what I mean? So, whilst we do have a few weirdos spoiling the broth for Black Templars, most of them, uh, the vast majority, are absolutely cool individuals who I'd love to share a beer with. Uh, but unfortunately, we do have a certain sect of them, maybe those who are mentally challenged, I don't know, um, who tend to take their rhetoric as a real-life thing, like, a, like Games Workshop endorsing their ridiculous uh, takes on race and 
gender and, and other things, right? Which isn't true. Which isn't true at all. Um, you know, I would consider myself a Black Templar fan in spirit. They're a bit too Templary for me. Do you know what I mean? There's a bit too much Black Templar. So I'd, I'd like to create my own thing with, with Black Templars and not have them be black and white and have the, the Iron Cross everywhere. Uh, but in terms of their outlook, I'm very much like that. You know, I'm, I'm very much... Um, I'm quite conservative in my ideals, and I, I, everybody who's watched this channel for a long time will know that. I'm kind of hippie-ish, and I want everybody to get along and be fine, but I'm also very much like, look, you know, I want my wife, I want my kids, and, you know, I, I, I want to be... I want to be left alone. I want to be okay. Thank you, you know? Maybe that's more libertarian than conservative. I don't know. You define me how you want, and I'm, I'll just carry on with my life, eh? But yeah, those are Black Templar fans, and I knew that one would be kind of controversial, but you know, it is what it is, guys. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I will say, again, the vast majority of, of Black Templar fans are not that way. They are lovely, lovely individuals. And I think, it's, and again, just drawing a line underneath it, I think it says a, it says a lot for the quality of people, as in you, who are in the Warhammer 40,000 hobby, if we can look at Black Templars as a faction and what they represent and who they are, and the vast majority, 99% of them, are cool, their fans are cool guys, you know, who see a part of themselves in the Black Templars, but also realise that a lot of their rhetoric has no place in the modern world, do you know what I mean? I think that's a huge pat on the back for the hobby as a whole. Moving on, uh, Blood Angels are next, and, okay, um, well, first thing about Blood Angels fans, you really like the colour red, you cannot collect Blood Angels if you don't like the colour red. Um, I, in England, I know a lot of uh, Manchester United, Liverpool fans tend to collect Blood Angels, right? Um, I, it's, a, it's a phenomenon. It is. It happens. Like I, your, your sports team wears red. You collect Blood Angels. It just is where you are. Um, beyond that, though, beyond that, a hell of a lot of people who collect Blood Angels saw the Stormcast Eternals and immediately got massive erections back in the day because they thought, well, that's all my conversion sorted for the next 10, 15 years. Thank you very much, Games Workshop. Right? Because all of... They, they love the Italian Renaissance aesthetic of having those those masks and those golden filigree armor types that are, that are on them as well. You know, you've got names like Raphael and Rubio and all these other things that are quite inherently renaissance timed you know quite quite inherently michelangelo themed you know what i mean um also if you like blood angels you quite honestly probably really love the tragic hero aesthetic you would like having your heroes having a bit about them in terms of being a bit mental and having the wherewithal to go a bit crazy every now and every now and then you quite like that um i mean one thing I will say, I will say for the for the Blood Angels fans, do you ever get tired of like having the flaws of the chapter? Yeah, yeah, they're all there, but don't you just want to win every now and again? Because the Blood Angels are always used, basically as cannon fodder. You know, you've got the devastation of Baal, and all these other wars that they get involved in. The Lamenters, oh my God, I didn't get me started on them. All the wars that they seemingly fight against the odds and, and die doing so. And, and you just think sometimes, you know, give them a bit of a break, give them a win. That they can get on, on their own as well. Here's the other thing. They are the most, shall we say, um, they came out of the Horus Heresy with the most clout. Maybe aside from the Imperial Fists. But I'm going to say even more than the Imperial Fists, the Blood Angels came through the Heresy with a lot of clout. A lot of it, because uh, Sanguinius' story, number one, you know, and his tragic fall at the hands of Horus, uh, the, the, the Blood Angels holding the line and being the tragic heroes of the Horus Heresy, you know, whilst the Imperial Fists were really holding the line and not really budging and you're know, fighting off all around them, the Blood Angels were the ones that were out there fighting, dueling with the enemy sort of a thing, along with the White Scars. But the White Scars' tactics allowed them to get in and out quite quite deftly, whereas the, the Blood Angels, they, they are literally an assault-based uh, legion, so they didn't really have the option to dive in and out, sort of thing. Most of the true heroes of the Siege of Terror books are Blood Angels, you know? 
or Adeptus Custodes, one of the two. Um, which is pretty cool, and it should be, because that's the those are the legions that are there. That are, those are the legions that are at the Siege of Terror. So, in terms of your legion and your chapter, I will th say that sometimes the one bad thing about Blood Angels, and this is something that I've heard from their fans, the one thing that it does say about them is that they don't really have any room to manoeuvre. As, as fans, you don't really have any room to build your own legend because the Blood Angels are so legendary in their own right. And so a lot of the guys who collect Blood Angels that I know don't really like writing their own lore, especially if they just collect Blood Angels. If you do a Blood Angels successor chapter, that's another thing entirely, right? But if you're just a Blood Angels fan who collects Blood Angels, you're not really the kind of guy who's going to sit down and pour over lore for hundreds of hours on end to try and design your own, right? You, why would you? You've already got the best kind of lore in Warhammer 40,000. I would say probably the chapter and Legion with the best overall story in Warhammer 40,000. So why would you want to go anywhere else? Again, there's not really much you can add to the Blood Angels, so I'm going to leave them there. I, I think as fans, most of you, um, maybe the vampire thing comes in a little bit. But you know what? Since my last video of this kind, of this type, I've known a lot of Black... Uh, uh, Black Templars, a lot of Blood Angels fans who don't really like the vampire aesthetic. I always thought that they were like, you know, pseudo Twilight people, but they're not. They're not. A lot of them think the vampire stuff's kind of cringe and they, and they don't really focus in on it at all. Which I completely get. I completely get because it is a more ridiculous part of the lore. You know, you can have. I would love the. I loved the Revenant Legion back in the day. I love the Blood Angels as they were. Fucking cannibals. Cannibals with a literal, literal need to feast on human flesh. That was cool. You know? Being space vampires, less so. I don't know any Blood Angels fans who like that f that part of their lore. In fact, most of them are kind of ashamed by it. And, you know, they would much rather their, their Blood Angels be carnivores to, to the extreme than actually be these blood drinking -ha -ha, you know, you know, actual vampires from Renaissance Europe, right? You know? Anyway, those are the Blood Angels fans moving on. Uh, Chaos Space Marines. This is gonna take me a while. Because unlike other ch other Space Marine chapters, I have lumped the Chaos Space Marines into a single thing. Why? Because we'd be here all day if I didn't. One thing that I think unites the Chaos Space Marines and, and, and the Chaos players in general is their absolute loathing for painting brass. <laughs> like, like the, the, these guys dream of brass-coloured edged armour. They just, they, they just night, have complete nightmares about it all of the time. The other thing that I like about them is quite a lot of, of the fans who go and collect Chaos, they wholly embrace being the bad guys. They wholly embrace being the guys that, you know what, yeah, we're the cannon fodder. We're the guys who are, by and large, losing all the time. Even if things work up, say we win, we lose. Why? Well, because we can't win, or the entire setting would fail and, and, and end. That's where we are. If you really like your tragic heroes who have tragic falls, again... A lot, of, a lot of Chaos fans tend to lean that way. You've got Angron story, Mortarian story. A lot of the... Um, what I would say is a lot of the um, Chaos Primarchs never really had their own agency. They're all tragic heroes because they're sort of forced into Chaos. Mortarian is. Magnus is. Right? The only one who really has a choice is Horus. And even then... It's either join Chaos or we'll just let you die. Which isn't really a choice when you're a Primarch, right? Because you want to live forever. You'd be so afraid of dying, you know? So there you go. Um, in terms of other things about Chaos Space Marine fans, though, is... Hmm, I actually think a lot of them... Look, okay. All right. Some of the more vociferous fans, in terms of lore, are Chaos Space Marine fans. Now... That's not a slight on them at all. It's not me having a go at them. It's not me saying that they shouldn't do these things. Sorry, that's my, my chair squeaking. It's not me saying that they shouldn't do these things. It's more that when the shoe is on the other foot, they go hard. 
like Aaron Dembski Bowden's uh, Talon of Horus, the Black Legion series, right? Those basically resemble an author just sucking off chaos and liking the taste. That's basically what it is. It's just him sucking off chaos. He's 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 a well abridged, you know, a well known chaos space marine fan, and you know. There is one thousand sun sorcerer in that who kills like five or six grey knights without even thinking, dude. No, no, and I don't get why grey knights are like are like the butt of everybody's um, punching bag for now. I'll get into that a little bit later on, but no, mate. You know, come on. And a lot of the more outlandish law takes from my experience in this job have come from Chaos Space Marine players. Okay, they tend to come up with a very um, exuberant, shall we say, power levels. But, in doing that, they also resemble the warp quite a lot, don't they? Because the warp power levels are essentially what you want them to be by sheer willpower. So if a lot of Chaos Space Marine fans think that way, then of course their lore's going to be fucking outlandish, and there's going to be fan fiction size bullshit. Of course it's going to be that, because it's got to be that. Right? Um, there are different factions in chaos for different people you know chaos space marine fans are a spectrum you have people on the one end who are completely demonic and completely gone to the point that they they just love the aesthetic of people like the death guard you know all that kind of stuff that they're completely they buy in completely to that form of smelliness that form of corruption they're just there and they love it right they absolutely love it they revel in being the bad guys absolutely you know that they, they absolutely revel in being those guys and uh, and i will say a lot of those guys are very hot with memes if you've got a friend who is a chaos player who is really a chaos player you know what i mean like the, on that end of the spectrum that guy's shit hot with memes especially 40k memes my god he he doesn't take 40k that seriously why he collects death guards <laughs> One of their power, one of their powers, is literally farting on the enemy. He collects Death Guard. Of course, he doesn't take forty k that seriously. All right, look at the Death Guard. Look at what they look like. Okay, yes, they are horrific in terms of the actual law, but look at those models. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look, look at little, look at little, little, uh, uh, the little nerglings running around. I mean, come on, right? But then you have the other side of the spectrum. The Iron Warriors fans, all right, the, the the Night Lords fans, who are a little bit to the left of that part of the spectrum, these guys don't like demons, and they like their tragic Astartes. I would say if I ever do Chaos, and I'm heavily thinking about doing Chaos, is I would be on that side of the spectrum. You have that side who are very much into their, their, their tragic Astartes, Astartes who didn't really want to be traitors. Astartes who literally thought in the Horus Heresy they were doing the right thing, right? Those are the guys who are on that side of the spectrum. The Iron Warriors, your loyalist word bearers, right? Um, your, shall we say, um, less mental Night Lords, if there is such a thing. And there is, because if you read the Night Lords trilogy, you know there is, right? All of those factions are on that side of the of the divide of chaos for me. Um, do you know what? I'd actually put the Black Legion kind of in the middle. The Black Legion would be kind of in the middle of those two sides of the spectrum of chaos space marine fans. Um, those guys will, will, will have a smorgasbord of everything because that's what the Black Legion are, right? When you think about it, 40k's law is designed ingeniously to engender fan input. You know? The fact that we can do a spectrum like that and it makes sense, complete sense for chaos, is genius. You know, world eaters I would put on like the, the middle part of the really chaos part. You know, so so death guard are on the way on the left uh, towards the towards the um, the really 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 mental stuff, and you got like world eaters just just above that hovering. You know, in the middle there. You know, uh, empress children way on the left with the uh, with the um, death guard as well. No, on the other side, you've got your Iron Warriors, you've got your, you know... Because it works even then, you know? Uh, take all the politics out of it, that's not what I'm doing. But you've got liberals on the left who want everything all the time to be awesome and everywhere. And, oh, give it in my veins right now. Those are your Death Guard, your, your, your Emperor's Children, people like that. Mentals, right? And you've got people on the, on, the, on the right over there who are very conservative, who are very like, no, 
No chaos. No corruption in me. Fuck you. I'm only a traitor and a renegade because you made me a traitor and a renegade. Go suck my suck my balls, right? That's that's your Iron Warriors. You you know, and that's it. Kind of works. It kind of works. Again, take all the politics out of it. We're looking at mindsets, mindsets. Um, I believe that's where you are in terms of your mindset about where you are. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Dark Angels. Well, we've done one Chaos faction, so on to another one. Uh, Dark Angels. So, um, what do I say about Dark Angels? Oh, Dark Angels fans, you are bitter as fuck about those Chaos memes. Oh my god. The first joke I did there turned off 95% of Dark Angels fans watching the video. They went, oh for fuck's sake, this again. Right? They are done with it. They just they are sick of it. But they did get their vindication in the original Horror Heresy uh, series, uh, uh, the, the Lion books, when the Lion says to Conrad Kurz, you know, loyalty is its own reward. And just stabs him. Right? How cool is that? And in the modern lore as well, we have the Fallen actually being redeemed by uh, Lionel Johnson, not something I particularly agree with. But there we are. Another thing a lot of Dark Angels fans are is very, very, very frustrated. Why? Because the lion came back and did nothing. Yeah, why does Gilliman get to come back and lead an entire fucking crusade? Two crusades? He does the Terran Crusade and then the Indomitus Crusade. Why? Why does he get to do all that? The lion gets back and walks through a couple of forests. I. It, that's not fair. I very rarely sound like a whiny bitch. That's not fair. <laughs> that is not fair. The lion is much cooler than Rebute Gilliman. He is. He just is. That is not fair. I am with you, Dark Angels fans. I am with you. That is some bullshit right there. That's absolute bullshit. Um, if I was going to do a Loyalist Legion, it would be Dark Angels. Um, I just think they look really cool, and I think they're the closest thing to 40, uh, 30k Black Templars, so I, I would collect them. Um, I also really like the knightly aesthetic of, you know, uh, Space Marine Knights. I think that that's the coolest looking aesthetic that you can get for uh, 40k or 30k. I just think it's an awesome look. Um, so, um, quite accomplished meme lords are Dark Angels fans as well. You, you guys are quite good with the old memes. Even though you are kind of sick of one particular one, which is, you know, the chaos thing. Uh, but hopefully, the law will start to exonerate your guys a little bit. And you'll be able to come out of it unscathed. I don't know. Um, one thing Dark Angels fans are, though. Bear with me, lads. Arrogant. <laughs> like, really arrogant. Do you, do, you know, do you know, it's not the arrogance of Fulgrim, though. It's not a preening, look at me in the mirror, aren't I so gorgeous? It's not that kind of arrogance. Do you know the arrogance that your big brother has towards you because you're his little brother? That kind of arrogance. Alright? It's kind of toned down. Um, I would say Adeptus Custodes is the evolved version of Dark Angel's arrogance. Right? There is some insecurity in there. Because other people have, have, have taken them over in terms of power over the years. So there's a lot of insecurity in the Dark Angels fans' arrogance towards other Space Marine factions. Because they know all the Space Marine factions, quite frankly, are probably better at going to war than the Dark Angels are at the moment. Unfortunately. And it is unfortunately, because Dark Angels are awesome. Um, whereas the, the Adeptus Custodes' arrogance comes from a place of absolute authority and confidence of knowing who you are and what you're good at. And knowing that nobody else is better than you. There's a lot of insecurity in Dark Angel's arrogance, you know? And I hope that goes away over time, but it is what it is. That's the Dark Angels, and that's what I think their fans are like. For the most part, I think they're sick of chaos. They're kind of arrogant big brothers. And yeah, that's where they are. Uh, Drakari. Okay. Um. <laughs> Alright, so. Uh, Drakari are, for them, that was a gnarly picture, by the way. Drakari are, for the most part, um, absolutely mental. I, I, I would just say, in fact, do you know what? I'm going to look at your fans, right? Most of the metalheads that I know, and you know the kind of metalheads that I mean, right? 
most of the metalheads that I know that are uh, not weird, but the guys that collect Dark, uh, uh, Dark Eldar tend to be quite spindly goths, you know? Um, have you ever seen, like, my missus loves a series called Extraordinary right now. I don't. I think it's, like, a, a bit of a a Gen Z nightmare. But, like, uh, you know, I, it's all in the background whilst I'm doing some, some painting every now and again. There is a character in there who can transform into a cat, right? Look, look up, look that up right now. If you're on Google, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find him. I'm gonna find his name. So, um, extra ordinary. You knew this was coming, guys, because this is gonna be a long video. Uh, yes. Uh, look for a guy called Luke Rollison, R O L L A S O N, and do him as uh, extra, put extraordinary. Luke Rollison. Make that guy a goth. That's your Dark Eldar player. Do you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, just going to get a, a picture of him. Um, so, Luke Rollison. That's your Dark Eldar player. <laughs> Shit. It's a really funny one. Too. i got to do this. Oh my god, that's so funny. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put him on. Okay. Here he is. Here is your Dark Elder. Dark Elder players, I'm so sorry I'm having to do this. But it's just too perfect not to. Uh, here he is. This is this is this is your average Dark Eldar player. Uh, you find him skulking around metal clubs and you know other other venues like that over the years. You'll you find him around the place and he'll always be talking to you about, you know, the different ways that the Dark Eldar can absolutely rend apart different parts of the human anatomy for their own pleasure. You know, it, it is what it is. He probably listens to, you know, uh, AFI. He listens to a lot of AFI and you know, all the things like that. Um, Cradle of Filth. You know, he's into all that shit. And he's there all the time. And he's like, I tell you what. Oh, you, uh, uh. And you know, he just, he just kind of talks like that. Um... I'm really sorry, Dark Eldar players. But there are so many of you who look like this. Who literally look like this. I I, I apologise if, you know, there are some of you who don't. But all of you look, <laughs> most of you, look like this. But you dress in black. And you have black fingernails. And you just walk around. And you never quite got over the goth phase of your life. Which is fine. Goths are great. You know, I love goths. But that's where you are. And, again, nothing wrong with that. It's just something that I've noticed. A lot of your fans, a lot of the people who collect your army, tend to look like this. They probably look, look like this as they're painting. This is the look he gives you. If you're his girlfriend and you walk into a room and he's painting his Archon, this is the look he gives you, alright? He looks up and he's like, uh, yeah, uh, I told you about our flensing techniques with human skin. And you're like, oh, you. And you go and make him a cup of tea, right? That is where we are. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I know you're going to feel attacked, Dark Eldar players. I know. I'm sorry. But um, as far as I'm concerned, you're all cool. I've never met... Hey, here's the other thing. I've never met an unpleasant Dark Eldar player. Like, ever. I've never met one. They've all been great. Every single one of them. In fact, the one that... Um, one other thing about Dark Eldar players I want to get on. Um, okay, let me, it's going to get a bit more serious. One sec. Um, one other thing about Dark Eldar players that I've come across is the ones who have been very troubled in their life. Uh, the 40k fans who have been very troubled have been Dark Eldar players. Alright? I know that's going to sound weird, but as somebody who's worked in hobby stores, you come across a lot of people in the hobby... And you eventually start to uh, work out some norms of different fan bases. And the one guy who was a lovely lad, I, I've, spoken to him, I've spoken about him a few times on the channel, who ended up taking his own life when I worked at Games Workshop. Um, he was the guy who came into to Sainsbury's on my way home from a shift at Games Workshop and tried to sell me a load of his models. Simply because he wanted the money to give to his mum and to give to other people who were struggling in his life. And I thought that was a really worthy cause. I didn't see the warning signs, right? I didn't see the warning signs. Uh, I played a few games with him. He was a lovely lad. We had, we had a, a nice laugh, but you could always see there was like a bit of sadness behind his eyes. There was a bit of torture there. 
which I always thought would be gone with, you know, maybe you know, a bit of a mood swing and he'd be fine, you know. Um, I didn't see the signs. I wasn't one of his best friends at the end of the day. And he ended up taking his own life. Um, I've had other Dark Eldar players be around me who who have been very, very sad and in very, very uh, dark places. And um, a lot of poets, actually. A lot of Dark Eldar players are a lot of poets there as well. Um, so... I don't want to paint them all as being the same. That's not what I'm saying. You know what I mean? But I've just noticed that. So if you do see a Dark Elder player out there, and, you know, they're nice guys, you know, maybe just, you know, give them, cut them some slack. Be nice to them. Um, you know, just... And there are other Dark Elder players who aren't like that, who are just absolutely reveling in the fact that they, they played the most fast, evil faction in the game. <laughs> There's that too. This is, again... Every single 40k fandom is a spectrum of people. Um, I'm just p pulling out the most extreme things that I've noticed about people in my time working and being around the hobby, you know? So, every single time... I know this may be wrong, but every single time somebody tells me they're a Dark Eldar player, I immediately start looking after them. I don't know. I don't know. It's like a training, an inbuilt training now. Like, every time somebody says, oh, I, I like Dark Eldar. And, and they're dressed, like, in, in goth gear and they look like this, I immediately start looking after them. I'm like, alright mate, you know, do you want to play a game? And I'll and I'll take a really fluffy list that doesn't do much, you know what I mean? Like, you know, that kind of thing. Even if I'm playing OPR, which I play mostly these days. Um, yeah. So, moving on. Uh, just gotta say, the thighs on the Eldar bitch. Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, moving on. Eldar. Okay. Alrighty. Got a bit of Eldar on the go. What do I say about Eldar fans? Hmm. Yeah. Dads from 3rd edition. Dads from 3rd edition collect Black Templars or Eldar. Those are the two factions that they tend to play. No idea why. Uh, mainly because, maybe because Black Templars were the big thing back then. And Eldar were also really powerful. If you used them correctly. I think that's what it is. Most of the adults that were around in 3rd and 4th edition when I was first starting out, were playing Eldar if they were really good players. Because Eldar were a glass cannon, but fuck me if that cannon couldn't blast you off the table in two turns if it was used right. Most of the min-maxing, you know, amazing, amazingly talented players would play Dark Eldar back in... Not Dark Eldar, would play Eldar back in the day. Um, just tending to happen around my scene. And so a lot of the guys of that age collected Eldar. Eldar aren't really a faction used by the younger generations in 40k. I think we can always say that. I think it's mainly going to be Space Marines who, who are the who are the younger generations in 40k. Um, but they are a quite quintessential army and a very, very important part of Warhammer 40,000 as a whole. And, oh boy, the, the Eldar fans are very, very good at telling you that over and over again. And over again. They do have the arrogance of the elves. But unlike the elves in Warhammer. They also have the tragic downfall to back it up. I love the fact that they are an empire in autumn. They are an empire that's on the way down. They have more in common with Tolkien's elves. Than the elves do in old world Warhammer. <laughs> they really do. Um, most of the guys who collect them though. Again. I'm not going to get too into the meme-age, because I know there are a few Eldar guys out there who like big titty elf women. Alright, who doesn't, right? We all do. Look at the comment I made about the Dark Eldar bitch. Look at this. Look at those, right? You'd simp for her. Don't tell me you won't. You know, so we're all in that boat, so I'm not going to really throw that at the Eldar players. What I will say about the Eldar players is, is that they're more unashamed of it. They're more like, yeah, our, our women are fine. What are you going to do? They're too good for you, filthy monkey. Right? You know, that kind of thing. Or monkai, whatever you are. Um, there is that inbuilt arrogance with them that I quite like. Dark Eldar don't really have that. They, they treat everybody kind of equally. Terribly, right? Whereas, whereas the Eldar, they'll work with you. You know, they'll try and work with you. They'll try and guide you. But you do get the sense, that even when you're talking to an Eldar player, they are seconds away from rolling their eyes. Like, oh, for God's sake. Filthy Monkai. Oh my god. You know? That kind of a thing. It's always there. 
Also, Eldar players, sorry lads, they tend to be the min-maxers. They tend to be the guys who eat every single drop of potential out of their armies. Why? Because they were brought up on that back in the day. Because if you didn't do that in, in 3rd and 4th edition, your Eldar army got fucking stomped on. You were trained to do that. So a lot of the guys who collect Eldar are absolutely playing for blood even when they don't mean to. Because they think if they don't, their army is going to get stomped when it won't anymore, right? Eldar are actually quite good uh, as, as an army um, for, for not in terms of toughness, but in terms of, you know, misdirecting other people's shots and things. Eldar shenanigans is the original shenanigans of 40k. Even 25 years ago. If you look at, like, oh, shenanigans, yeah, okay, fair enough. Grey Knight shenanigans, yeah, fine. The original one was Eldar, and they're still the best at it. And their players all act like that, too. <laughs> like, literally, literally all act like that. It, it's, it's wonderful. Anyway, those are your Eldar players. Moving on. Um, Gene Stealer Cults. Alrighty, Gene Stealer Cults. Gene Stealer Cults fans... Wanted to do Traitor Imperial Guard. But they weren't allowed. Why? Because King's Workshop haven't released an army for it yet. So they started with Gene Stealer Cults. They also really, really, really want to play Necromunda. But none of their friends play Necromunda. So they play Gene Stealer Cults and 40k instead. They play 40k's version of a very large gang. And that is where we are with the Gene Stealer Cults. Um, they are a very Horde-ish army as well, so Gene Stealer Cult's players are mostly looking down and trembling at the thought of painting yet another 50 to 60 small models in their lifetime. They're pretty sick of it, and they're also kind of, kind of, the runt of the litter, even in their own faction, and they're proud of it. They worship the Tyranids, and what is their reward for winning a war for the Tyranids? being devoured by the coming uh, by the coming swarm of Tyranids who are going to come down on them like a sack, like a big sack of shit, right? So, those are your Gene Stealer Cults. That was quick, but I think it's so obvious what you guys are and what you guys, you know, purport to be that it's not really worth going on about it anymore. Like, that's what you are. You know, you, you, you wanted to collect the Necromunda gang, but none of your friends play Necromunda, you know? You wanted to do Traitor Guard, but Games Workshop won't let you do Traitor Guard, so you went with Gene Stealer Cults instead. Also, obviously, big fans of the Alien series. Most of the Alien series fans don't collect Tyranids. They collect Gene Stealer Cults. I know. Weird. Absolutely weird. I think a lot of the guys who are into Tyranids end up collecting Gene Stealer Cults and maybe allying them with Tyranids. There is an adorable couple at my local hobby store who are the girl, she collects Tyranids, and he collects Gene Stealer Cults. That's adorable. That's just adorable. Moving on. Grey Knights. Oh, God. Okay. All right. So. Oh. Okay. I'm going to say most Grey Knight players suffer from a thing called tired arrogance. Yeah. Tired arrogance. You're tired of the other factions are on your level getting all of the power and getting all of the uh, the love. I.e. I, I, the Adeptus Custodes and armies like it. You're a bit tired of that. You think you should get more love because your faction is, is essentially a mix between the Black Templars and the Adeptus Custodes. You like knights in outer space. That's something that you're really into, you know? That's something where you are. But I will all also always say that that tired arrogance is a thing, right? You do think you're above other Imperial forces. Even the Custodes in, at times. Which is nonsense, because we're not. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, other, gray light, other Space Marines, though, you look down on them with a passion. Do you know why? Because we have... The same insecure arrogance that Dark Angels do towards other Astartes. Because we are the best Astartes. Okay? 
but the law has told us we're not in terms of our actions for so long. You know? It, it, it's one of those really annoying dichotomies of Games Workshop's writing. Whereas at the boilerplate of the Grey Knights is, they are the best of starties, nobody comes close to them, and they're all amazing alpha level psychers. Okay, fair enough. And then all the law below that is, is Grey Knights losing to normal Astartes, i.e. Space Wolves and other people like them. And Thousand Suns, right? Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Do one or the other. That's what I would do. Do one or the other. I think a lot of our soft arrogance, our tired arrogance, comes from the point uh, that we used to be the faction uh, when Matt Ward had us, when Matt Ward was, was writing his blasphemous texts. Grey Knights were the faction. Grey Knights were were the absolute bee's knees, and, and there was nothing coming anywhere near them. I think we're still suffering from that even today. When we've been one of the worst powered factions for the past four or five editions, they still get shit on for the stuff Matt Ward did back in the day. Which isn't right, because the Ultramarines don't, right? The Grey Knights do. Um, again, it's tired arrogance. Grey Knights fans, you know you're the best Space Marines out there, but you're tired of defending it. You're just tired. You're done defending it. You're like, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. None of us have ever fallen to chaos. But what about the Silver Knight? No, no, wasn't a, wasn't a Grey Knight. Shut your mouth. Shut up, right? Why do you think that was a Grey Knight when there's like 90,000 other chapters that wear silver and have psychers in them, you know? Just don't be silly. It just, yeah. And, uh... We, are, we tend to be one of those factions as well. We, even the things that we're good at, other people try to take away from us. Okay? Aaron Dembski Balvin's one of them. You know? You're, we're really good at fighting chaos and demons and psychers. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> 1,000 sun killed five or six Grey Knights without even thinking about it. So there. Like, okay, cool. All right, cool. Well, we've never been corrupted by chaos. Uh, yes, you have. <laughs> the Silver Knight. <laughs> right? We, we can't have nice things, apparently, in the law. You know, we're better than normal space marines. Huh? No, you're not. Huh? You got beaten by your uh, space wolves. Huh? Right? That, again, all the writers who did those things can fuck off. And this is what tired arrogance sounds like, by the way. Dark Angels fans, even though this isn't your faction, you are nodding along sagely. Like Mr. Burns. Like steepling your fingers. Yes. Yes. Y yeah. Well, there you go. This is what tired arrogance sounds like. We know we're better than you. And no amount of shitty authors will ever convince anybody, any one of us, that we're not. We're better than you. We are We are Maxwell Jacob Friedman of the Space Marines. We're better than you, and you know it. Which is why you can't stand us. Moving on. Imperial Fists. Oh, I like me some Imperial Fist, but what I will say about the fan base, if you're an Imperial Fist fan, ah, aren't you a good boy? Aren't you a good boy? Yeah? You are a lovely little golden retriever of a man, aren't you, if you like Imperial Fists? What an innocent, innocent, you know, you know, you know that bro that you had when you were younger? And he'd be into something and he'd be like, bro, this is so cool. I really like this. And he's not complex. He's a, he's a simple lad. You know, he's not complex. But he's a lovely bloke. That guy collects Imperial Fist. Is what it is. If you don't believe me, go and look at Chapter Valrak's channel. <laughs> I've got tons of friends. Luckily, I've got tons of friends who are just like that. You know? He is an awesome, awesome dad of the hobby. A really nice bloke. Okay? Doesn't take the game too seriously. Loves the models. Loves the Space Marines. Simple as. You know? Love me Space Marines. Love me Emperor. Love me Dawn. Simple as. Love me boys. A, a lovely big golden retriever of a man. And he collects Imperial Fists. You know? There you go. It is what it is. I don't think I need to say anything else. I think Black Temp... Uh, sorry. Um... Uh... Imperial Fists, you guys are literally just that. I don't think I need to expand on it. I don't think there's any really bad side to the Imperial Fist fans either. I just It's not something <laughs> that I've come across. They're just nice. They're just nice, nice dads. Another dad faction. They're just nice. 
Okay, they're just there. Like, oh, yeah, you know. I like the not a hobby, but I'm not gonna like ruin it for anybody else. It's fine, you know. Yeah, just yeah, great. Not like them. One thing that can trigger them is the old Iron Warriors. <laughs> um, but again, that's kind of like dads. Dads are very like that. Like they have things that just trigger them. Whether it be football, whether it be another sport, whether it be a certain political stance, there's some things that make your very nice dad go, and, you know. And for Imperial Fists, that's the Iron Warriors. <laughs> Again, they're just a chapter of nice boy dads. That's what they are. And good luck to them. Good luck to them. Um, Imperial Guard. Okay. All right. If you know a World War II enthusiast, he collects Imperial Guard. You know the one I mean. The, the one who's in your group who is a, is a physicist or he's a scientist or something like that, but he's a real nerd for tanks. He's a real tank nerd. Well, he collects Imperial Guards. That's literally what he does. He collects Imperial Guard. Um, he loves movies like Enemy at the Gates and all that other stuff. He, he just he just creams his pants watching Saving Private Ryan. Absolutely loves it. And again, um, he collects his Guardsmen and he's proud to do it as well. They are the hammer of the Imperium. They make up the vast majority of the Imperium's forces. And... They are very, very, very okay with that. But they have a subtle arrogance, too. Why? Because they look at the space marines and go, Oh, you've turned up, have you? Oh, oh, you, oh you've turned up. You've deigned us with, to, to grace us with your presence. Very nice, thank you. Yeah, we've been here for 10,000 years fighting this war, but that's fine. You turn up and you steal the glory, that's fine. You know? A lot of Imperial Guard players just want them to have that one thing. That one victory, that's theirs. Do you know what I mean? It isn't taken away by superhuman warriors. They want that one victory, that's theirs. Here's the thing, fans of Imperial Guard. Games Workshop are never giving that to you. Why? Because Imperial Guard are seen as the lesser Imperium faction. So if they beat another faction in open warfare, that makes them look really weak. And it's bullshit. Because I really, really, really like the Imperial Guard. Um, again, a lot of the guys who, who collect them are war enthusiasts. They, 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 they are the kind of guys who will go into a souvenir store and will look at World War II memorabilia from back in the day. And they'll, they'll unironically buy, like, shells, spent shells from a gun from World War II. Unironically, they'll go in there and buy that. Yeah, it's fine. That's the kind of guys that they are. Um, again, I don't think I, don't think I need, really need to go into it any more than that. You know? Also, again, as I've already touched on, some Imperial Guard players just like playing, you know, normal humans. They like seeing themselves represented in their fiction. These are the kind of guys who, when they have a game like Dragon's Dogma or, or Mass Effect or another RPG like that, they will create a character who looks kind of like them. Nothing wrong with that. It's great seeing yourself in a video game. I do that too, which is why I can recognise it in other people. I reckon you guys who like Imperial Guard are the same kind of person. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Imperial Knights. Okay, most Imperial Knight players couldn't be arsed doing the hobby. I'm just gonna, just gonna come out and say it. Most Imperial Guard players couldn't be arsed doing the hobby. They just went, ah, God, I can't be bothered. How many models do I want? Three. Okay, I'll, I'll do three. You know, they've got a lot of money to throw around, you know, so they go, okay, I'll do three. So they come in and they do their three knights and they go, right, okay, we're going to march forward and kill most things and probably win the game, you know, it, without realising that the most meltdowns I've seen of, of players in 4DK have been, uh, recently have been Imperial Knight players because they just don't understand why these huge wrecking ball machines just get decked by, by so many other things in the hobby. Um, they look like they should just murder everything, but you. But they come into to the to um. They come into the hobby thinking, right, this is a one size fits all win machine. So I'm gonna go into that and, and have this, and it doesn't. And they're like, what the fuck? What's going on there? Um. But again, I digress. You know, the law of the Imperial Knight is really, really, really cool, and I can see why you like it so much. I really can. I just don't find it that interesting myself 
But that doesn't mean your choices are invalidated, do you know what I mean? It just means that I don't find it that interesting to see people walking around in a mech. I, I just... It's never really hit me, do you know what I mean? In the fields. Um... I look at somebody in a big mech, mech suit and I think, coward. Come out here and fight me like a man, right? That kind of a thing. I just, you know, hence why I collect Grey Knights, right? I just, you know, I just, yeah. Um, but I but I do, uh, I respect your choices in your army choice. I do, and I hope that you get a lot out of it. But what I will say is that the vast majority of your fan base that I've come across have been like, why did you collect Imperial Knights? Um... I just can't even bother painting that much, so I just bought these and then spray painted them, and then that's it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I don't need to do much else, right? That may just be my part of the hobby. Don't get me wrong. That may be my people that I come across. So please don't um, have a go at me if you think that I'm wrong there. Other thing I'd like to point out is on this piece of artwork. Look at this single <laughs> Nurgle guy. With his bell in the middle, at the bottom. Facing all of this, coming towards him. He's like, hey! <laughs> he just, everybody else has got their weapons out. Like, okay, let's go in and climb over these things. And he's got this one guy with his bell. Hey! <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. Also, one thing about the Imperial Knights that is in this picture that I want to see before I move on. Do you see the fallen Imperial Knight to the left there? With the pilot coming out of it in his cool ass armor, ready to throw down. That's the kind of guy I want to fucking collect. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. The balls on that guy. All right, you brought down my mech. All right. Now you gotta face me. No, I'm getting out of this thing. I'm gonna. I'm really pissed off. That's the kind of guy I want to see in 40k. Anyway, moving on. Um, Adeptus Mechanicus. Oh my god. If you've got a friend who is a science nerd, if you've got a friend who you find it hard to talk to sometimes because all of his explanations of physics and the laws of the universe that he understands because he's, he's got a doctorate in it or something, he probably collects Mechanicus. I doubt Mechanicus. Um, a lot of the people who I know who revel in the fact that they have autistic tendencies to not get along with people and to be exacerbated by people, but not by machines. They like Mechanicus, right? It is what it is. That, that is where they are. They love them some Mechanicus. Um, also, Mechanicus people, uh, Games Workshop are picking on you right now by literally being like, oh yeah, yeah this faction, yeah, it's terrible, and we're not updating them. This is going to be terrible forever. And uh, that's what we're doing. That's, you know, their, their entire codex is fucked. <laughs> and they picked the right fan base to go after. Because you're all so nerdy and non complainy Apart from that one guy who burns his codex. You're all so nerdy and non complainy that you just sort of gotta get on with it. You're like, okay, yeah, all right, cool. And you just get on with it because you like your models and you're, and you're nice. But stand up for yourselves. Stop being the Games Workshop's whipping boy. The faction's really fucking cool. Especially if you're the kind of guy who likes old science. And you like this faction that is, you know, very, very unique to 40k. Get in there, son. You like the art decor things? You like Bioshock? Get in there and have fun. And try and turn your, turn your codex around, you know? But I know, if you know any of your friends who are well into, let's say, um, physics, science, shit like that, 9 times out of 10... They're going to be big fans of Adeptus Mechanicus. Moving on. Uh, Necrons. Okay. Um, th there is an, an appalling amount of uh, hot ladies who collect Necrons. I've dated several of them. I don't know where it comes from. Ladies, can you explain to me why so many of you collect Necrons? Can you? Is it the Catan models? I don't know. But so many of you collect Necrons and, and you just go for it and you, you'll like it. Um, one thing I would also say about Necron fans is that these guys really don't like painting anything but metal. Matte colours really aren't their things. Like like whites and greens and yellows, really not their thing at all. They like metal and they like painting metal. And I can see why. 
it is very, 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 shall I say, um, satisfying to have a metallic creature. Right? You spray it, you ink it, you dry brush it, you pick up the details, he's done. These are people who can churn out a lot of models very quickly. And they tend to be the gamer's choice. That's another thing that I've learned. People who are serious about playing 40k as a game tend to collect factions like Necrons. Why? Because they can collect things, paint them, and switch them up on a fly. Very, very, very quickly. If, if, if um, Doomsides or Wraiths become the meta for Necrons, all a Necron fan has to do is go out, buy a few of those things, and paint them in four or five days, and he's ready to go, right? He's not, he's not building a, another massive entrenchment of models. Which uh, they quite like. And uh, Necron fans also tend to be rather uh, on the Dark Eldar side of eccentric. I don't know why. But a lot of them tend to be... Um, I've come across them as quite effeminate, right? Quite a lot of the guys there are quite effeminate. Quite a lot of the guys there are quite, you know... Um, very pliable in, in, in speaking to them. They're quite nice. And they, they, they will go on about their own army in a way that doesn't take it too seriously right they're necrons at the end of the day what else do you want to know there are a few of them who will do their own dynasty and they'll do their own thing but most of them saw the film terminator saw that they were in 40k saw that they don't really need to paint very much and then get into the game quite quickly and very logically got into got into necrons and they stayed with them and there's nothing wrong with that at all and that's pretty cool and uh yeah, I think that's where Necrons are as a fan base in general. Um, I use the word effeminate there because I've only I've known several Necron players and they've all had voices like this, you know. And um, this is my Necron uh, Cryptarch, and he's going to you know, like they've all they've had voices. I don't know why, but they've all had voices like that. That might just be a me thing, as I've said before. I might have just come across people like that. But if if you too know Necron fans who speak that way, or not quite that way inclined, not gay. I'm not saying they're gay. I'm just saying that they're quite, you know, all right. You know, they're, they're normal guys, but they're a bit effeminate. And uh, most of them are straight, of course, you know, and, and it is what it is. Not that being, nothing wrong with being gay. Oh, my God, I'm going down a rabbit hole. I'm going down a rabbit hole. All right, there's nothing wrong with being gay. Nothing wrong with it at all. I just don't think most Necron fans are. That's what I'm saying, right? All right. They may be effeminate, but they're not. Do you know what? Moving on. Orcs. The ultimate... Dad faction. Ultimate. Absolutely. The absolute number one dad faction. Um, I would say Black Templars are probably number number two or three of the dad factions. Orcs are by and away number one. The amount of jolly, happy dads who just collect orcs and think it's fucking hilarious to beat their sons about the head with choppers is astounding to me right i never realized this was a thing until i got into 40k and i started working the games workshop then i realized oh my god most orc fans are these jolly dads who come in go <laughs> all day and that's all they do that's literally all they do and they love it and there's nothing wrong with that uh, the other part of, of Orc players is that they don't give a shit about winning for the most part. For the most part, they utterly don't give a shit. They are there to spread their culture of love and combat and fighting and dying. And that is their culture. That is their thing. That is what they are here to do. If they have a good fight, then it's worth it to them. That's all their culture resembles. And that's all the fans resemble. The fans... I have met very, very, very few salty orc players in my time. Very few. Right, I met a few, but not many. Very, very, very few. They genuinely don't care about winning. They're there to have a fight and have a good time. And in that, they're very good dads, because they're spreading the love of the hobby to their kids, and they're making sure that they're not taking the game too seriously through their own attitude. And I think that's marvellous. So war away, gentlemen, war away. Fantastic. Uh, Salamanders fans. Nope. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Come back. Come back. Um, 
The reason why salamanders are getting their own point in the video is because I didn't do them last time. All right, that's why. If you're an Iron Hands player, you're going, what, what, why, my own vote? Well, because, number one, nobody cares about Iron Hands. Sorry, guys. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I do. I do. I love you, right? But, like, nobody else does. This, that's the problem. Um, salamanders, though, you are, I, 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 I hate to be the meme, but you, it, the nice guys do collect salamanders. But I have noticed something about Salamander's players. Um, a lot of people who profess to be nice guys collect Salamander's. Ah, controversial, huh? Right, well, it's true. A lot of people who profess to be nice guys who don't care about winning collect Salamander's. And then they will bring the most meaty, non-friendly list... That you could you've ever seen in your life. I had a mate in seventh edition, who was a jolly nice teacher, who was a nice guy, but every single time he took his salamanders, it would be three sky hammer detachments. He would blitz me off the field at the top of turn two, and then just tell me to get good. Yeah, that kind of player. I'm not saying they're all like that. Absolutely not. And I'm and I think the memes of them being generally nice guys is true. Most of them will be nice guys. But I do think a lot of dickheads... Not dickheads, but overly competitive guys... Fly under the radar... When it comes to collecting things like salamanders. Because, you know, they collect a nice Space Marine chapter... With nice nice guy lore. I think a lot of them swim underneath. You know? Um, a lot of salamanders fans like themed armies. I've noticed this a lot too. Very themed armies. So you have... Obviously the Salamanders have the ultimate themed army. They like fire. And they like... Lava. They like scales. And they like... Hammering things together. I don't know. Sue me. Right? They like that kind of thing. They, they like being forge masters. Which is great. And... Again. They are a highly, highly, highly themed Space Marine chapter. And that is something that... They like... So, I don't think I have anything else to say about, about Salamander's fan. So, moving on. Alright, Adeptus Sororitas. Um, Sisters of Battle. Uh, you guys like nuns. You guys like uh, big titty nuns. And, um, I'm sorry if you think that I'm calling you out for being a pervert. I'm not. We all like big titty nuns. But you really like big titty nuns. Um, you know... A, a hell of a lot of guys who I know who are who like alternative things in terms of... Um, do you know, weirdly, weirdly, do you know those guys who tell you, like, you know, the indie fans of indie bands, and they go, oh, yeah, I like this band. You wouldn't know them, though, right? Because they're not, not out here yet, right? A lot of them collect Sisters of Battle. Have you noticed? Or is that just me? A lot of them have or do collect Sisters, though. It's strange. Very, very strange. Um, you know, they'll be into eclectic things like making their own VR headset with a bread... bread uh, with a breadboard or something. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. I had a mate who did that at university. He made his own VR headset and he was, he, he was in, really into indie music. He would dress like a fucking, you know, 1970s hippie. And he was really into his sister the battle. And I've known several people like that over the years. I have no idea what that's about. Um, my sister's partner, actually, also collects Sisters of Battle. But he's not a hippie like that. You know, he he, he, he resembles it a little bit. And I think he used to be in that kind of a phase. But he's not anymore. I kind of think he's in it for the big titty nun look. I'm just going to be honest with you. And if you want female space marines, by the way, this is your faction. Every single time somebody tells me, we need female space marines. I point them in the direction of the Sisters of Battle. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with wanting big titty women in power armor. If that's what you want, Sisters of Battle, there they are. Alright? As I've said before, though, people who say those things don't want their own thing. They want your thing. Right? Is it th because they're children, mentally. They're children. They're retarded. Right? If they say they want female space marines and you give them sisters of battle and say, look, 
It's females wearing Space Marine armor. There you go. And they act in the same way, basically. There you go. They'll say, no, I don't want that. I want your Space Marines to be female. Well, why isn't... Well, I've given you good enough. You've got female Space Marines. They're there. They're just not called Space Marines because they're their own thing. They're not generic. They're their own thing. They're all female as well. No, I want your thing. Okay, fuck off. Next. Space Marines in general. All right, cool. Uh, you are just getting into the hobby. If you're a fan of Space Marines in general, you are just getting into the hobby or you never got out of that phase. I am proud to say I am one of you. All right? I have never gotten out of the phase of finding Space Marines fucking cool. <laughs> like, I have never gotten out of that phase and I don't think I ever will. Um, I, I've always been in there... Uh, there's a part of me that's starting out in the hobby. I started with Eldar. I really wish I started with Space Marines and I did Eldar later. Because I got such a, a, a horrific conditioning of, of 40k back in the day. But I, I love me some Space Marines, dude. Space Marines are cool. They're not boring. I don't give a shit what you say. They are not boring. They're cool as shit. Absolutely. I've even put on the screen some of the lamest looking Space Marines. The Crimson Fists. Right? And they still look cool. They're awesome. They are the ideal starter army. In any war game. In any setting. In any fantasy property. They are the ideal starter place. You start here. You start with Space Marines. And then you move on and do other things. When you get more comfortable with the game and, it, and it's tendencies not only that there is a such a vast smorgasbord of uh, combat doctrines and chapters and legions within the space marine uh, dynasties and going back through, through the years that the potential for your own imagination with space marines is fucking limitless you have your iron hands on one end of the spectrum all right you have your again th this is going to mirror the chaos part of our video, right? You have your spectrum of Space Marine fans. You got your Black Templars on your right hand side, right? And you got your Salamanders on your other side. And you got all the people in between. So around the, the, the Black Templars, you got people like the Carcharodons, the Black Dragons, all right? The less caring of the Space Marine chapters, they're all over there. Who are very dogmatic in their will of the Emperor. And on the other side, there's still Will of the Emperor, but you've got people like Salamanders. You've got people like Crimson Fists. You've got people like the Emperor's Spears and all those other people, right? You've got... Where your, where your faction goes in the Space Marine smorgasbord is up to you on that spectrum completely. And that's why they're so powerful as a thing. And unlike Chaos, right? Unlike Chaos... I find Chaos kind of limiting because eventually you will get mutations and eventually you will start rubbing up against the law if you really want to make them your own thing. Space Marines aren't that. You can make them whatever the fuck you want and it'll fit into the law. Generally, right? As long as you're not ridiculous with it and you try and stick within the rules of the setting, you can make it what you want. So that's why I think a lot of you collect Space Marines are either new or you never got out of that new stage. You never got out of... Of that non-cynical phase where you went, this is just so cool. These space marines are so cool, man. You never got out of that. You never grew out of it. And congrats to you, dude. Congrats to you. Most 40k fans are you. For a reason. For that reason. You never grew out of being, ki being a kid. You know? You saw your space marines, you started collecting them, and whilst all your friends moved on, you went, you know what, I'm alright here. I like these guys. I'm going to stand and die on, the, on this hill with these guys. Good for you. Oh, fuck off. Tau. Um, yeah, uh, I love I love me some Tau. Um, again, Tau are one of the factions that have tempted me the most one of the factions that have almost tempted me the most over the years um in terms of having their own faction and being their own thing 
I remember when Tau came out and the kind of people who went with Tau. Because anime back then wasn't a huge thing. And I think and, and, like Tau fans are very interesting in that they're, they're old school guys are now dads because these are one of the factions like Necrons and like other other people, Black Templars, who came out when those dads were growing up or at least starting in the hobby. A lot of them started playing the video game Fire Warrior and got into it that way. A lot of these guys are dads and, and have their own jobs and their own times and things like that. And so they collect the larger forms of um, Tau models. Tau aren't a, a difficult army to paint. Look at their armor. Several large pieces of, of front-facing armor with a lot of black underneath. Done. Right? You're happy. You're ready to go. It's just, it's, a, it's just a really, really, really cool army to go and collect if you want um, a very, very, very quick. A very quick army to put on the tabletop. Beyond that, though, in recent times, we have seen a huge influx of anime people who have come into 40k. And that's no bad thing in itself, of course. A lot of them have started to get into things like the Tau and, uh, and their big-ass Gundam suits. We've started to see Games Workshop embrace that as well. They've, it's one of the really weird occasions where Games Workshop have seen a sea change in the, the fans of a certain faction and have gone, okay, you want Gundam suits? Here's a fucking Riptide. You know, here's some more. Like, here's some more Gundam suits for you. Since you like Japanese shit, you like anime, you like Gundam, there you go. There you go. Um, so if you are a Tau fan, you're, then you are likely into one of those two things. Um, again, I don't think there's much more to say about your faction, dude. I think that's that's where you are. You're either a dad who started out with Tau because they were simple and you never really got out of them, or you're somebody who's a bit of a weeb, who's been into weebish stuff for a long, 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 long time, and you just got, got into 40k because you saw the Tau and you thought, I'll have me some of that shit. And, of course, the greater good. We can't go anywhere without discussing that. No, it's not fucking communism. Shut your face. There is no fascism or communism in 40k. There are factions who are perhaps inspired by certain evil dictatorships that have gone on throughout human history, of course. But there are not copy and paste political slogans in 40k. Shut your fucking face, alright? I refuse to believe anybody getting it, or the vast majority of people getting into Tau aren't doing it for political reasons. Go swivel on a dick and get in the sea. All right, cool. Moving on. Tyranids. All right, we all know you women. We all know you're hot. All right, you can stop collecting Tyranids now. All right, we all know you want your little bugs as pets and you like to give them names. Yes, we know. We know. Just move on. Move on. Right, it's, it's fine. I don't know why. I don't know why. Mostly women collect Tyranids. I have no idea. No idea. Right? My missus even loves ancient Egypt, so I've been showing her the, the Necrons. She took one look at the Tyranids and the Leviathan box set and went, Ooh, I want to make those. Like, I don't know what it is. It's a weird... Is it because they're, they're like pets? Like little creatures that you can have? And you know, is it that? I don't know what it is. Is it because they're, like, asexual? And you don't want to play stereotypical women in, in this kind of setting? So you stay away from, you know, Sister to Battle and you go towards these? Right? You know? I don't know. I don't know. I've got no idea. Is it because of the birthing process? I don't know. The birthing process of, that they go through? There are a lot of Tyranids that do that. Like, are, like literal brood mothers, right? What do you think? It's just odd. I've known two guys that do Tyranids in my time in the hobby. Two. One, two. That's it. Right? One was a guy who called Luke who did Skittle Nids. So he, he painted his, nid, his, his, his Tyranids like all the colours of the rainbow. And not for that reason, for, because he liked Skittles. There you go. And uh, another guy also actually called Luke who was at university... Who did his like the aliens? So he did them in, in matte black with a varnish finish, with like silver, silver, um, you know, appendages and limbs and things and teeth. He did that kind of thing. So, but everybody, every single other player of Tyranids that I've known has been a woman. No idea why. It's very strange. So if you know why, 
put in the comment section down below. I'd love to speculate. I really would. Ultramarines. Okay. The big boys. The big boys. So. Um, and there's a Grey Knight there, of course. Good old Grey Knight. Playing second fiddle to the shittest chapters as per usual. Um, so, in terms of Ultramarines, um, you are somebody who got into the hobby from, I'd say, Assault on Blackreach onwards. Right? Assault on Blackreach onwards, you've been into 40k. Um, the Ultramarines have been presented to you as the be-all, end-all of Space Marines. They're on the front of every box. They're mentioned all of the time. Nearly all of the most important things that go on in 40k, unfortunately for the Imperium, revolve around these assholes, right? You also don't really get the hate. You don't understand it. You like what you like, and you don't care if anyone else thinks it's boring. You've got to collect it, because you like what you like, and all power to you, as far as I'm concerned. Low-key, Ultramarines fans are some of the most mentally robust 40k fans out there. They're able to take a lot of slack and still collect their Ultramarines, and not give a shit. You know? I quite like that. There's something I admire about that, because that's not me. That is not me at all. So I admire you guys a lot for that. Um... Again, that's all I've got to say. Maybe you were into the Legion in, in Horus Heresy, but I, I, that's all I've got to say, though. You like order, and you like there being a good versus evil aspect of 40k. You don't really like the, the greyness and, and the morality problematic parts of 40k as a setting. You like being the heroes. You like things being simple. You know what? Respect to you, Ultramarines fans. Last but not least, the White Scars. Um, Alright. I'm going to level with you White Scars fans. Uh, your chapter's fucking lame. And I'm, I'm not from... Not from a standpoint of... Um, you know, not being a cool chapter. Because I, I think they are cool. I like the hunting aesthetic of them. I think it's cool. What I don't like is that Games Workshop just said, You know what? Let's just take Mongolia and China and just make a Space Marine chapter out of it. It's just, it's just lame. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just lame. It's lame in the same way that the Space Wolves are lame. Okay? It's, it's in the same way. A bit less. You're not as bad as them. You're not as cringe as them. But it's still there. It's still kind of lame. And I think a lot of you are kind of like the Ultramarines fans and that you just don't give a shit about that. You think Mongols and Space is such a cool idea that you just couldn't get away from it. It just sucked you in. You were there. Also, their time in the Horus Heresy was also really, really, really cool. I know a lot of White Scars players who really got into the chapter through them. Um, I also like the White Scars as an aesthetic. I think it's a really... This this particular warrior, this particular piece of art, I've always loved. I've, I've always thought this is a really cool piece of art. It's been I've been floating around Reddit now for a few years, and I've always liked it. That is what a White Scar to me would look like. Maybe tone down the... I'm a Mongolian. Look, do you know what I mean? Like maybe make him just naturally Asian rather than literal Mongolian. Um, that would be pretty cool. And maybe tone down all the little bits of 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 uh, the culture that are there. You know, same thing goes for Ultramarines as well. The reason why a lot of it's so cringe because they're so fucking Roman. There's Romans who wear blue. You know, it's okay having, for me, having a historical. Um, inspiration for your chapter. That's fine. That's great. But fucking hell, man. Like, come on, rein it in sometimes. Um, as a, as a White Scars fan, though, you like GCSC history. You're you're one of these you're one of these historians, and I'm not looking down on you. I'm not right. But you're one of these historians. You're like a bro historian, right? Like, bro, Genghis Khan was so cool, bro. Like, yeah, and that's fine. Because it's guys like you that I love to teach. Because you guys have open ears and open hearts and you're ready to learn. And I love that. You're the guys who go out and you and you buy, you know, the Dan Jones history books. That keep a lot of us in fucking work. Us historians, right? So thank you for that. And a lot of you guys collect things like 
white scarves because they have such a canonical historical tie back that you can't get a, get away with that. You you are the kind of history buffs who will who will who loved time commanders. You loved time commanders back in the day. You loved Medieval 2 Total War. You thought the Mongols were the coolest thing fucking going in that game, right? And now you collect white scars, and there's nothing wrong with that. All I would do is, is tone down the Mongolianness a little bit, right? And make the white scars be their own thing with their own culture that resembles the Mongolian Empire. And I'm fucking in. All in on the white scars. I love them as a chapter and a legion. I just can't quite get past that for now. Anyway. Oh, fucking hell. Where are we? 101 hour and 25 minutes. My God, guys. My God. That is where we are. If I forgot your army, I apologize. Um, these are all the ones that I could do without losing my voice. So, I mean, fucking hell. Even Gene Steeler cults are in here. The reason why Leagues Over Tanner aren't in here is because I don't really know what your fan base is yet, because you're very new, you know what I mean? But I will do eventually, and I will be able to throw you into an ignorant pocket like I have done. And please, if you've been offended by any of this, just know I am an ignorant asshole, And I've never said I was anything else. You know? But I'm also a super genius. Do you know why? Because I can't prove I am, and you can't prove I'm not. You know? These were... What your 40k faction says about you when you're doing it in the hobby. I love you all a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow for some more hilarious hobby nightmares. Have a good one. See you later. Bye now.